Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I got so excited. Today is our 201st episode. Can you believe it? 201? I cannot. I'm so happy that we're going to have another 100 or 200 uh, episodes to go. So I'm very excited. Uh, we're having a little issue, I think, with the live, um, but it'll be okay. It, I think our, our, our internet is working well. Good morning, Kim. How are you? I know that if you're brand new and you're looking at this and you, uh, I had the lady say yesterday, is this a cooking show or a hello show? Because I do spend the first part of every show saying hello to everybody. Why? Because Cindy's Kitchen is a, kitchen, is a cooking community. We talk, we chat, we have fun. And so because of that, the first couple of minutes are hello. Hello, Diane from West Michigan. Hello, Gail from Chicagoland. Oh, look at Carmel Ann is here, and Debbie's here, and Gail's here. Hey, Lori. Anne is here from the UK. Julie from Northwest Houston. Hey, Lori. Good morning, my little daughter, Larissa. Good to see you. Asifa is here. There's Judy. Hello, Asifa. Everybody doing okay? Judy. Oh, well, hello from Wisconsin, Judy. Good to see you. You can always watch the, the replays. Remember, if you are watching the replay, don't forget to do hashtag replay. Debbie, good morning in Illinois. Joan in Illinois. Asifa from Pakistan. Katie's on. Irene's on. Jerome is on. There's my Northwest Houston. Hello, Katrina. Good to see you. Hi, Brenda. Mmm. I don't know. We're just going to have fun. We're just going to keep smiling. All right. Good morning, Lisa from Florida. Hey, Irene. You know, um, somebody posted on Facebook about just saying, it's okay. So whatever is, it's okay. Good morning, Mom. Hello. Ivan, do you prefer to go by Ivan or Jerome in New Mexico? Barbara from Philadelphia. Linda from Illinois. Judy, not the same as alive. I know because I don't get to say hi to you, right? Hello, Sharon. Good to see you. Well, I woke, let me just tell you the story. I woke up this morning and it's supposed to rain here today and it's already started raining, but not like coming down, but it's already started raining. And I usually get up between five and six every morning, but this morning there was none. I was just like laying in the bed going, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I'm going to stay in bed. So I didn't get up till very late, very late, I tell you. It was like 7.45. I slept in. And so I needed some, I needed some flowers. Okay, well, I'll go with Ivan. How about that? Because it's at the first. Herrera. Is that how you say it? Herrera. I used to know somebody whose last name was Herrera. But Herrera. There you go. Hello, Debbie. Jimmy Smith. Good to see you. The Plainsman man himself. Jimmy and I went to high school, and he was the mascot for the football team. Uh, good morning, Sue. Linda Sue's here. All right, are we ready to get started? All right, let's get started. It was raining in Kentucky, but stopped. Oh, well, my arthritis is just doing one of these things today. Good morning, Debbie from North Carolina. All right, so let's, let's do our coffee clinks. Everybody ready? Coffee clinks. Clink. Mmm. I bought all the Danish buttercream, no, Danish butter cookie coffee cream that Kroger had. <laughs> I bought like four of them. I bought all, because you know, it's a Christmas thing, so they'll be gone. All right, what is cooking in Cindy's kitchen this morning? Well, today we're making what you could be a Sunday dinner or a family dinner. It's roasted chicken and veggies. And I know that may sound very boring, um, but I'm telling you that the taste is anything but boring. Oh, Irene, I'm sorry. Um, hey, Larissa, did you hear about Mary? I'm just saying. I, it's sad when I know stuff about, hey, we'll have a little conversation, right? All right, so I'm gonna start with my veggies. We're gonna roast our, we're gonna roast everything in one pan. One, one pan. <clears throat> and so here is a sheet pan. Sheet pan with parchment paper. Okay, let's ask a question. When you grew up, 
Did you call these things? Although this is different, right? Sheet pan, cookie pan, or a cooking pan, or maybe even a baking sheet. I don't know. What did you call this? A baking sheet, a cookie sheet, a cooking sheet. What did you call it? There's actually a difference in how they're made, but did you call it a particular thing? I think I grew up just saying, hey, Nina, just saying um, cookie sheets. Okay, good, Larissa, thank you. Good morning, Terry. Cookie sheet, cookie sheet. Yeah, see, everybody said cookie sheet, but cookie sheets are actually different. Here, let me show you. Ugh. You see, these are cookie sheets. You see how the little but you can slide the cookies off. That's a cookie sheet. I don't buy these anymore. And I won't buy them because this was not cheap. I don't know what brand this is, but it was not cheap. And it was had the little stuff on there, but they warp. You see how, you see that? I don't know why I still have it, but it warps. And so what happens then is when it's in the oven, it goes pop, jelly roll pan. That's not what it's called. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so I don't like these, but I'm just telling you, that's a different thing. This would be a cookie sheet. Cookie sheet jelly roll pan. Okay, well, there. so there you go. Maybe jelly roll pan. Oh, this one. Okay, yeah, jelly roll pan. Okay, so there you go. I've never made a jelly roll, so. All right, where should I put this? I'll put this over here. <clears throat> We're gonna start cutting up some veggies. That's the new kind. My mom always called them cookie sheets. Yes, jelly roll pan has sides, or now this is called a half sheet pan, right? That's just what it's called. You can get a full sheet pan or a half sheet pan. I got this at the, where did I get this? Restaurant Supply, because I like these. Hello, Linda from Tyler. All right, uh, so we're gonna start cooking. Whatever veggies you have, but I'm gonna go with more of a root veggie, fall veggie kind of mixture here, but you decide. Now. I've got half of an onion here. Uh, I'm gonna slice it and then cut it in half. Look at that, slice it, cut it in half. Now I have a big bowl, my, my big old bowl, my bob, and I'm just gonna put, as I cut things in, I'm just gonna drop it in the bowl. Uh, the other thing right now, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are, um, are not too terribly expensive. Now, how do you cut up your veggies? <clears throat> this depends on you. You have no sound? Um, well, I don't know what to tell you because I could talk, but that wouldn't do any good because you couldn't hear me. I don't know what to say, Mom. Everybody else has sound or they would say something, so I don't know. All right, so how big are you gonna cut your pieces? And really, that's gonna depend on how fast you want this to cook. Um, I'm going to be using chicken thighs, chicken thigh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. That's what I'm using. And so they are thinner. And so I, I want all this to cook about the same time. Good morning, Brenda. And so what that means is, um, uh, hold on one second. Let me reach. Oh, I have a yellow pepper too. I'm going to stick in there. Um, I want the soft veggies go out and come back in. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys. I can't really uh, respond on here if she can't hear me, right? Um, so you want all the veggies to cook at about a similar amount of time. So these, uh, a bell pepper, whatever color you have, they don't need to be cut up fine. So look, I just, oh, I might do that. Look, so there you go. They don't have to be small pieces uh, because they'll cook fast, right? The other thing I have right here is a, an, an acorn squash. I love these. <clears throat> They're called an acorn squash. Why? Because it looks like a little acorn. Isn't that cute? Because it's a root vegetable, it's a winter, it's not a root vegetable, a winter vegetable. Um, these are easy, cheaper right now. Um, look, you just go in, take out the seeds. That's all you have to do. Now, a lot of people peel these. You see, it has a, you see it has the, the peel on the outside. You don't have to. The, the peel is perfectly edible. Perfectly edible, I tell you. That being said, if you decide you cannot eat that peel, 
like I said, it's perfectly fine. Then what you could do, I mean, you could peel it or you could go ahead and cook it and then the, the flesh just comes right out of there. So wholly up to you. So I'm, again, this is a harder vegetable like a carrot um, because you know, it's a, it's a winter, a winter squash. So I'm gonna cut it into a little smaller pieces just because I want it to cook and be done. Be done, I tell you. All right, what what veggies kind of go and look in your uh, crisper? Tell me, or on your counter, wherever you keep your veggies, what kind of veggies do you have? Hello, Joanne, how are you? Now, I have these little bite-sized potatoes. How you wash them? So, and so I'm gonna get out, I don't know, five or six of those. You could use a regular size potato, and these I'll probably just quarter. See, look. Uh-oh, dogs are barking. See, look, I'm just quartering. And then I'll drop those in, okay? If the potato is particularly large, even though they say bite size, you obviously can cut them in a smaller piece. You can use any kind of potatoes. I'm doing great, Heather, good to see you. Oh, Heather, I, I gotta show you something in just a second. We bring my heart base. Um, so, so you can cut these if you just have a regular russet or a white potato uh, or uh, little red potatoes. Any of those are fine. Heather. Heather loves Polish pottery uh, vases, right? Heather, I got this one. Look at this. Isn't this pretty? I got, okay, wait. Potatoes, onions, celery, cabbage, carrots. Okay, you are good, Katrina. All right, watch. Look, you see this? Did you know this fits perfectly in my hand, just like this, see? It's perfect for my hand, and it's 11 ounces. So it's like an 11 ounce mug. It doesn't have handle, but it fits perfect. It's a vase, but I'm using it as a cup. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Debbie has potatoes, onions, carrots, butternut squash, and spaghetti squash. Okay, not the spaghetti squash, I don't think, but the butternut, okay? All right, I've got, what else do I have? Here, I'm gonna put a parsnip in there. Remember the parsnips? Um, I bet that Anne from the UK probably uses parsnips more than we do uh, in the United States. Would you say that that's true? Hey Donna, isn't that cute? I know, I kind of snagged it. I think somebody else wanted it, but I was too quick and I got it first. I just thought it was so cute. Now I am gonna peel this parsnip. Parsnips are like carrots, um, but they have a little bit more, I don't wanna say bitter, but kind of a tangy taste. Um, not as sweet as a carrot. Linda, but you know what? They're really good in mashed potatoes, I think. It, it puts them in a whole nother level, mashed potatoes. Um, and, and Again, it's a different flavor, right? We're adding a few layers of flavor. All right, so what else? Oh, I have carrots. Where are my carrots? Okay, look, carrot. I, I didn't buy the ones in the bag. I bought the loose ones. And that's another good thing. Yes, covered in honey and roasted. Oh, and we're gonna have to do that. Um, for, I'm not gonna peel this one. I'm just gonna cut it. I rarely peel the carrots. I like them fried in butter. Oh, yum. Parsnips in my chicken soup. Wow, what great ideas everybody's sharing. That is fantastic. We're gonna have to try some of that. Um, I've been buying vegetables, not necessarily in the prepackaged bags because I may not need that many. And especially if you're cooking for one or two, you, you may not need a big bag of something. So what I found is, the, the individual things like the, the loose mushrooms, the loose carrots, sometimes those are just as cheap. Butternut squash, carrots, sweet potatoes, cabbage, and of course the Trinity. Okay, you're doing good and good. Heather has lettuce, no lettuce in this. Spinach, no. Cucumbers, no. You're gonna make a big salad, Heather. <laughs> Onion, carrots, maybe the mushrooms. You might can use the mushrooms. They're a little wet, but not the avocado. Heather can make the perfect salad though. Oh yes, if you post a picture, I gotta keep going, cause you know, if I start chitty chatting, 
All right, is that all I'm gonna put in there? Yeah, look, look at all the stuff I have. There is a ton of veggie in here, right? But I want you to use what you have. So what do I have in here? I have um, little bitty potatoes. I have sweet potato. I have parsnip. I have carrot. I have a yellow bell pepper. Um, and I have uh, part of an acorn squash. So wholly up to you. You can use, the thing is, is we're gonna put these on a baking sheet. And we don't wanna crowd the baking sheet because then they steam and they get icky. They're not roasted, right? So this bowl that I have is just about the perfect amount for one. We had chef salads for dinner last night. Oh, okay, Heather, well, that sounds good. Now, the seasoning blend that we're gonna use on this in our chicken is a little out of this. I'm gonna tell you, once we get done, I'm gonna tell you the easy way to go, but here we go. If you have Old Bay seasoning, does anybody have Old Bay seasoning in your pantry? Okay, Old Bay seasoning. Tell me if you do. So, oh yes, Jessica is pushing. If you post a picture of a meal that you've made or you're referencing us, make sure you put, because we had to add something different, at Cindy's Perfect Bite. No apostrophe, just Cindy's Perfect Bite. And then it should go on here. Yes, 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 yes. Look at everybody has it. Okay, well, I swore I did too, but I did not. Now, this is my little, I took some of them out, but this, whoa, and they're falling off. Usually, this has 12 on here, but because I've taken them off, they're not on here very well. But anyway, this is what goes in my spice cabinet, and it spins around so I can find things. But... Look at this, I'm just gonna take them all off right now because I have to use them all. That's why I said, if you have, you always have old, okay, well, I thought I did as well, but I did not, and so now I'm gonna have to make my own blend of Old Bay. And so, here we're gonna start. I'm gonna start with celery salt, not celery seed, celery salt. And I'm gonna make enough for all of this, okay? So I'm gonna do three tablespoons, oops, that overflowed, of celery salt, okay? Three tablespoons of celery salt. I am gonna put in a teaspoon of salt because I've made this before and I didn't put it in there because celery salt, and it to me it needed salt, okay? Now we're gonna do, I'm gonna use smoked paprika, I don't think they do, uh, but I'm gonna use um, two teaspoons, teaspoons now we've switched, one, two of smoked paprika. This is my version of Old Bay, all right? Uh, then I need, and then for the rest of it, I'm either gonna use a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of black pepper. La, 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 you were waiting, right? This is cayenne pepper. I'm gonna put some cayenne pepper in there too. And I'm gonna put, well, I'm gonna put a whole teaspoon because we like things zippy. Anyway, so I didn't have any. Went to the store, I have to go down. Okay, now the rest of everything else is just a half of a teaspoon. Hey, Vicki, hey, Laurie, cinnamon. Cinnamon's in there? Yes, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Go. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Mm. Again, this is my version of Old Bay. <clears throat> Half a teaspoon of allspice. Again, this is a great way to clean out your spice cabinet, right? To figure out what you need to replace, what's really old. Nutmeg. Nutmeg, yes. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Come on. Oh, I need to refill my nutmeg, obviously. See, good I did a check. Uh, cloves, half a teaspoon of cloves. And then the last ingredient is half a teaspoon of ground mustard. A lot, right? Although I may put in, I like a little bit more mustard, but there we go. Now, this is what would be my Old Bay seasoning. But to this, for this particular recipe, I'm gonna add 
Oh, look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons, tablespoons of, of uh, granulated garlic or ground garlic or garlic powder. Just don't use garlic salt if you already put the salt in there. So for me and for this recipe, I'm adding the stuff. Anyway, so at the store, they had no Old Bay seasoning, none. So I knew we were, we were out, right? We, I was like, really, I'm out? None, not in the seafood section, not in the spice section. Ask the people, no Old Bay seasoning. Can you believe it? All right, so, which is fine. I can make my own, it's not a big deal. But there you go. So there we go. It's my version of Old Bay seasoning plus two tablespoons of granulated garlic. So, if you're making this recipe, I would use, um, I would use four tablespoons of Old Bay seasoning and two tablespoons of garlic, granulated garlic. That's what I would use. If I was making this, just using the Old Bay seasoning, okay? All right. And I may or may not use all of this, which is fine, because it depends on how many veggies. If you're cooking for one, you may not fill up this bowl, right? You may make a little bowl, and that's fine. So now we need some olive oil, but I tend to have, oh, there it is. Ooh. We're gonna put some olive oil in there. You don't have to put maybe two tablespoons, maybe three. I drizzled, I drizzled. Um, and why, 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 why I ask you, where is my spoon? I just had my spoon. I had a wooden spoon right here and now I've lost it. Oh, here it is, sorry. Ah! Okay, uh, you can, the best way people will say is to get your hands in there and get dirty, get greasy and make sure that the veggies are totally coated. Who does that? Do you, do you use your hands? Do you get in there and make sure that the veggies are totally coated with the oil? Who does it? Me? I'm using the spoon. You could use a spatula. All right, now that I have the oil all over that, everything's coated, now I'm gonna put in my seasoning because now it'll stick, right? All right, so I'm gonna use, oh yum, I'm gonna use two tablespoons, mm, two and a half, two and a half tablespoons. <laughs> Again, it really depends how many Terry does you with your hands. It depends on how many veggies you have um, and how many you're making. You obviously, if you're cooking for a lot of people, you can double this up, triple this up. Just make sure you use multiple baking sheets. You don't wanna put so much on the baking sheet that it's too terribly crowded because then the veggies will steam and get mushy, not necessarily roast and be kind of crunchy on the outside and yummy on the inside. Okay, look at that. Is that yummy? La, la, la. Gotta love it. All right, so if you don't have parchment paper, you certainly could use aluminum foil. That would be fine, or tin foil, whatever you call it, all right? So now I'm just gonna dump all this on here. What is, wait, what does Rebecca say? So stinking cute. There we go. So stinking cute. There we go. All right, we're gonna spread out Again, we don't want anybody, we don't want anybody crowded. We want everybody to feel, this is not COVID-19. Me, use clean hands. Well, of course, Karen. Um, of course we would use clean hands, right? Um, I just don't like my hands all greasy. Mother knows that. My mother, she probably laughs because I never wanted to get my hands dirty. I was not that good girl. Okay, there we go. Spread it all out. Now, I'm just gonna set this over here, just one second, because now we have to get our chicken ready, all right? Here is the saga of the chicken this morning. Here's the saga. Remember, we got a new dog about two weeks ago. We adopted a new dog from the shelter, and she is a solid white Siberian Husky German Shepherd mix. And her name is Snow. And she is quite lovely. She is the sweetest girl. She really is. Just wants lots of love. They'll wash my hands again and again as I've heard hand washing while cooking OCD. Oh. Oh, I don't know. 
Um, anyhow, uh, will you drain that just one second? Anyhow, so I, I started defrosting my chicken last night in their fridge, right? Because I wanted it defrosted for this morning. And I had a family pack because I wanted to do a batch before the show so I would know that it was ready and I'd taste everything and all that. And so I was gonna do four of the chicken thighs first to show you, and then four when I actually made the meal. That was perfect. Well, I did the four and put it in the oven, <clears throat> the other batch. And so I have the other four sitting on a plate just like this, right? Of course, this is more. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six. Because I'm gonna put this in the bowl that I mixed my veggies in. And again, these are chicken thighs. But you could use any kind of chicken you want. This might take longer. <clears throat> we have had dogs forever, but we've always had little bitty dogs, like little bitty dogs. Shih Tzu, Papillon, little Beagle Mix. Uh, we had a Maltese. We've had little dogs. This is a big dog. Siberian Husky, German Shepherd Mix. I hear Jessica scream, no! The big dog has no problem getting on the cabinet. And the big dog ate the chicken. Ah! Bad snow, bad, bad, I know, right? Bad, bad, anyway. All right, a little olive oil on our chicken. Uh, again, tablespoon or so. We just wanna make sure that our chicken is uh, coated in the oil. Obviously, we want defrosted chicken, right? And so, and, you know the Polish pottery with the Boleswavia village, the little buildings? Mm -hmm. I'll get the little platter and show you what the pattern looks like. I had a bowl in that. No, it's over here. You gotta get the platter because she killed the bowl. I had a bowl sitting in here and it had blueberries in it. Moose, that's what I'm calling her now. Moose decided she needed some blueberries to your left, down. There you go. Um, Moose decided she wanted this. Look at this, this pattern. You seen this pattern before? I had a little bowl in this pattern and it's a unicat, hello. Not a cheap one. She went to eat the blueberries, smash. Polish pottery everywhere. I have cats, so I'm always careful what I put on the counter. Well, but I've never had a problem, right? Because we've always had little bitties. All right, now for a chicken, again, how much you put in here is gonna depend on how, if you're doing one chicken breast, you know, use a tablespoon, that's fine. If you're using six, maybe you need two or three, just depending on how big your chicken is. The deal is you wanna make sure your chicken is coated. And again, you like to get dirty, get your hands in there. I would put on gloves before I did this, but you know, um, you just wanna make sure that the chicken has seasoning all over it, okay? So you see, just mixing it all up, Seasoning, like, see, I flipped it, and there's not seasoning on this side. La, la, la. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I love that dog. Thank you, Karen. These are bamboo. They're bamboo. But I like the colors. I needed a new wooden spoon. And um, so I went to buy a new wooden spoon. I just, I mean, I, I didn't need a whole set, but I was enamored by these. And so there you go. Okay. Our chicken is voila. Here's our pan of veggies. Did I tell you to preheat your oven to 450 degrees? Yes, 450 degrees. All right. Because I'm not touching it now either. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my chicken and I'm gonna set my chicken on top of the veggies. All right, just like yet. Just like that. Oh, yum. If you have chicken pieces, like chicken tender, Ruby got my pumpkin cheesecake I made for Thanksgiving. Oh, that would have killed me, killed me. Yeah, Terry has two big dogs. And so she knows what I'm talking about. This is my first go round with a big dog. I've just, I've never had a big dog. So um, there you go. All right, all right, and then here's another little piece because I had to go defrost some more chicken. All right, so there we go. 
Look how gorgeous. Look how gorgeous that is. 450 degree oven. It's going in, I would say 30, maybe 40 minutes. Again, it depends on how big you, you cut your vegetables and how thick your chicken is. So really, I'm paying attention to the chicken. She's waiting, I know, I know she is. Okay, so I kinda taught you basically how I make Cindy's Old Bay seasoning, but then of course I added a bunch of garlic in there because I think it's necessary. So we did that. We roasted our veggies, right? And we got our chicken going 30 to 45 minutes. Now, I did this the other day. I'm sure you remember. Well, I don't know if you remember. If you were watching uh, when I was restocking the basics in my pantry and my fridge and all of that, <clears throat> and I did this, I showed you something. You don't have to do it, but it is my new favorite thing to do, especially when I'm doing something like this with veggies, all right? So, I've got a pot. I, I wish I could remember the name of the lady. Uh, she's a younger lady, married in New York, lives in a, an apartment. Anyway, I watched her do it, and now I'm all about that. Here are all the scraps. Look, the ends from the parsnips and the carrots, right? The end of the, the pepper, the onion that I cut. Look, there's the skin and the root and the end of that onion. Um, the skins, because I peeled the parsnips. Uh, the outside of my, there you go. Look, watch. I'm putting it in a pot. This was my trash bowl, and now it's all going in a stock pot, okay? Now, to the stock pot. Oh, and there was one other thing. Here, look. Ugh. Let me move this. I do have a couple of pieces of uh, garlic that are getting a little uh, not great. Just not great. So um, they're drying out. I'm not gonna peel them. I'm gonna smash it just so that it's opened up, okay? But look, still in the paper. You see it still, look at that. Still in the paper, in the pot. I know, wild, crazy. Now, the only thing I'm gonna add to this is I am gonna add, um, well, I had to refill, I was out of pepper. All right, so I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of pepper and about a teaspoon of salt, okay? And then water. Water, water everywhere, yet not a drop to drink. I just have a carafe full. I, w I think this is like 32 ounces. I'm not sure exactly, but I'm just gonna take the carafe and fill it with water. Now, quite frankly, it looks like trash soup. Rachel Ray keeps the scraps for stock. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you've been saving yours in the freezer now. See, oh, that's so cool, Katrina. All right, well, see, I'm new to this game. Veggie leftover stock Tuesday and added to my, uh, so easy. And, and really, think the prices in the grocery store are going up. I don't wanna waste. Anyway, so it looks like trash soup, doesn't it? Looks like trash soup. I'm gonna put this on the stove top and bring it to a boil. I'm gonna let it boil. Once it boils, I'm gonna put the lid on it. Just let it hang out and sit for a while. Here's the cool thing that I made the other day. So I just have it in this little plastic container. But look at the gorgeous, yummy, of course there's salt and pepper on the bottom, but look at the gorgeous color of that veggie stock. And it's just from the ends and the pieces. So once it's boiled and you know all the flavor comes out, then I just drain it, right? Because you don't want all the paper and the seeds and all that. Hey, Jenna, you just strain it out and you have this, oh my goodness, so good veggie stock. Because really, <clears throat> stock's number one ingredient is water. All right, look at this. This is the roasted chicken with veggies. I took it off the baking sheet. This is the one I made before moose. Her name is Snow, but when she does something bad, I call her Moose. I took it out. Here are the four chicken thighs that I made. Hello, Sandy from Colorado, welcome. And then all the veggies went around. Isn't this a lovely family dinner? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Ta and da, look. Ha, great picture, right? Okay, there we go. Beautiful, gorgeous family dinner. But we should taste, because you know, I know how you guys are. You always want to see what everything tastes like. So, 
I'm just gonna eat it off my platter because I can. Okay, there's the chicken. Mm, I'll do it separate. You know I like the perfect bite. Did she eat the raw chicken? She did. So I don't know if that does anything. Hello, Esther. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Moist, seasoned, gorgeous, yummy, yummy, yummy. Ta and da. That is right. Now, mmm. Let me get this. Mmm. The potato. Mmm. A little crispy on the outside, but perfectly soft on the inside. What else do we taste? We have the onion on here. Oh, let me have a little parsnip. Let me have a little parsnip. Mm, for Anne. Mmm. Now see, when you eat parsnips, you taste them. They're a little bitter. That parsnip is sweet. Oh my goodness, it's so sweet. Anyway, so there you go. Just watch to see if she doesn't feel good. Late. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on her. Yes, yeah, Snow might want to cook, have some cooked chicken now, right? With some veggies with that, right? So now, last night I made hamburgers. And I did put the hamburgers in the microwave just to keep them away from you know who. But anyway, so we made Cindy's version of Old Bay seasoning because she didn't have any. And then we did this beautiful roasted chicken and veggie platter, right? And really, how much work was that? It really was just cutting everything up, seasoning it, and stick it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then, of course, we did our scrap, our, our veggie scrap stock. <laughs> you gotta try it, I swear. I feel like I, 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 oh, it was an epiphany. Epiphany, I tell you. Anyway, so there you go. You gotta do what you gotta do to make a beautiful meal. So, you can make a salad to go with this, right? Me, I'm like digging in just with this. I think we're having this for lunch and for dinner. There you go. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you, uh, people are always asking for chicken recipes or dinner recipes, something that's not a casserole. Um, I understand that because my youngest refuses to eat casserole. Now, that being said, Sometimes I just make casseroles. You have to eat ramen if you don't want to eat what I make, right? There you go. So, um, but for those of you who have those children who want everything separate, there you go. You guys have a lovely day. Um, don't forget to, uh, if you take, if you cook anything, if you take a picture, make sure you post it at Cindy's Perfect Bite. No exclamation. Joanne, hey, look, you're late. Look what I used. Roasted chicken and veggies in the sunburst pattern. That big serve, it's, a, it's called a turkey platter. Look at that big turkey platter in sunburst. La, 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 la. There you go. Or as Rebecca would say, wow, that is just so stinking cute. Isn't that stinking cute? <laughs> you guys have an awesome day. From my kitchen to yours, May your dinner be roasted and yummy and full of flavor. And I will see you again on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Love you guys and see you then. Bye-bye.